Uh, good evening, everyone. I get the pleasure of going first. My presentation is quite straightforward. I'm just going to give you a little bit about me, a little bit about LUC, and hopefully uh, much more about Shawfield, which I'm here to speak to about tonight. Um, Firstly, a bit about me, my name is Duncan McLean, I'm Associate Director with LUC, and I've been there just over 15 years. Uh, I've got a big birthday next year. Um, I graduated in 2000 from Edinburgh College of Art with an undergrad in landscape architecture. I've also completed a two-year part-time postgrad of urban design at Strathclyde between 2008 and 2010. I'm a chartered member of the Landscape Institute, but I'm also a registered practitioner with the Urban Design Group. Uh, and just a, a few key projects of mine that I'm quite proud of, the Inverness City Centre Public Realm. Uh, I'm currently working on the University of Glasgow campus extension project, uh, Urban Town Centre. I've done a lot of work with Scottish Canals and I see Heather somewhere in the darkness over there. Um, and obviously I've worked on Shawfield now for about five or six years uh, and it's, it's ongoing. Uh, just three or four slides about LUC in case you don't know who we are. Uh, we're a multidisciplinary environmental practice uh, covering landscape architecture, urban design, planning, ecology. We've got specialists in EIA and we've got lots of brilliant people who do fantastic things with GIS and graphics. Um, we're currently located in four locations, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Bristol and London. And this year we're opening a small Manchester office. Uh, we've got about 100 staff in total and probably about a third of us are landscape architects uh, and there's about 12 uh, landscape architects in Scotland between Edinburgh and Glasgow and I think I saw one at the back. Hello Alex. Um, and last year we celebrated our 50th anniversary uh, and we had a series of events throughout the year. Uh, this was a, a kind of question time event we had in our Glasgow office where we, a number of our clients turned up and did a bit of Q&A on the theme of an infrastructure, I think it was, and uh, Drygate kindly prepared some beer for us for the evening called Green and Gold. Um, that's actually me behind the pillar there, <laughs> hosting the event. Uh, and we work at a variety of different scales, so from kind of strategic, almost regional scale, uh, kind of planning works, this is spatial plan for the River Don Corridor in Aberdeen, right through to detailed design, public realm, city centre, uh, looking at curb details, that kind of thing. Um, but now onto uh, Shawfield. Um, these are, this is the most words you'll see in my presentation, thankfully. Um, but in a nutshell, what is the project? So the, the client is Clyde Gateway. Uh, and Shawfield is about the creation of a uh, business district of national importance. So the kind of scale we're talking about is about 2 million square foot of office and industrial uh, space, of which phase one is about 300 square foot of grade A office accommodation on the River Clyde. It's about 65 hectares in total. Again, phase one is about 17 hectares. Um, it's contributing to the regeneration of Glasgow's East End. Uh, something in the region of 15,000 jobs will be created, so they say. And this, that's a kind of 20, 25 year horizon. Um, the main components of the project is uh, land assembly. So Clydegate, we've done a lot of work in terms of negotiating land ownership, sometimes through uh, compulsory purchase um, to enable um, well, kind of large-scale demolition of buildings and structures that are there, major ground remediation works, um, the development of a landscape public realm, which is where we come in, and uh, basically trying to attract and market the, attract investment and, um, and, and market the, the site um, to private developers. So this slide is a little bit old, but just to give you um, an indication of where the site is, so city centre is here, uh, River Clyde, East End, the blue boundary is the Clyde Gateway boundary, and Shawfield is the red boundary here, which is on the south side of the Clyde. And you'll probably know Dalmarnock, the Athletes' Village, uh, Bridgeton Cross. And these are just a few images of what the site was like when we first started. So it was very much a, a kind of a combination of vacant and derelict sites. Uh, demolition had already taken place. There was still active industry ongoing. 
um, some of which was uh, it's kind of manufacturing, this is a concrete mixing plant. Um, there was not that much in the way of through access, lots of dead ends. You wouldn't necessarily know that you're, you're actually on the River Clyde here. There's no direct access to the river at all. And uh, I'm going to ask that you don't ask me any questions about the remediation process. Um, <laughs> but in, in simple terms, there's lots of uh, nasty chromium as a result of chemical works on the site previously. Um, this is what chromium looks like when it's bored out of the ground. Uh, and in simple terms, the, rem the remediation strategy was about uh, isolating culverted water courses that existed already, making sure there was no migration of contamination into the water courses, importing a huge quantity of uh, calcium sulphide from Japan, mixing it with lots of water, creating calcium polysulfite, injecting it into the ground. I've been told not to use the word neutralising, but it kind of converts it from nasty chromium into not so nasty chromium, and then you can build on it as long as you've got a capping layer. That's as detailed as I'm going to get um, on remediation. But in terms of the team set up, it was quite a, a complex team. This is slightly out of date because some of these organisations don't exist anymore. It was very much an engineering-led team um, by URS, now ACOM. Uh, we are down here, uh, which was our starting point in the project. I would like to think that if this was redrawn today, we would be further up this organogram because uh, I think our contribution has been uh, quite significant uh, in realising uh, a very good project. Uh, LUC's role, in an, again in a nutshell, uh, there was the original master plan that was submitted for uh, planning permission in principle along with an EIA. Um, so we inputted to the master plan process as well as prepared the LVIA and then there's been two phases thus far. Phase one, which is the grade A office development, um, the remediation of that site, the landscape public realm framework that's gone in and we are currently working on phase two. So master plan inputs, uh, this was our first input to the master plan and, and I, I'll be completely honest and say we were a bit frustrated to start with because we didn't necessarily have input at the very start of the master planning process. Um, it was something that we were a bit disappointed about um, but gradually, over the course of a year, we started to input more, and this was our first input. Um, it was really just to identify the key issues. Um, we had a five-minute <coughs> slot in a big meeting about remediation, lots of technical engineering issues, and we thought we'd just try and summarise them as best we could. So it was really about doing something with the river, acknowledging the east-west strategic access corridors, and then the, the more kind of north-south active travel routes to offer permeability down to the riverside. Those were developed in a little bit more detail to try and contribute to the establishment of a green network strategy for the master plan. So it was, again, it was about acknowledging there is the key spine route through the centre of the site, um, facilitating access to the river, very obvious thing to do, but there was no access there currently. And then actually just allowing active travel routes in between the river and the, the main uh, spine route and extending that into the rest of the site so you create this kind of very permeable network and then identifying nodes where you can do something a bit more special um, and a bit more distinctive and that kind of led into the kind of basic uh, development of the master plan process and this was the resultant master plan that was submitted for PPIP. It's very high level, very strategic master plan. I've summarised about a year's worth of work into about six slides but um, that's what was submitted uh, and the architects produced some nice uh, sketches to accompany that. The phase one design development, essentially that's phase one and phase one basically the focus was on remediation of that site. We didn't necessarily have a brief. Um, it was about trying to pump all that calcium stuff into the ground and put the capping on, sort out the civil engineering and the drainage and we kind of knew, we discussed with Clyde Gateway what we wanted to do and again it was primarily about the riverside frontage and establishing a key link straight through the middle of the site that would connect to the new uh, smart bridge that was going in in parallel to this project. Some very initial sketches which were really about exploring some of the, um, the brief formations, so again 
you know, very simple sketches about how, you know, we wanted to treat the riverside, how we wanted that main walkway to, to work. We wanted to do something a bit more than just putting some paths in. And very early doors we established we wanted to do something a bit more informal with the river and something much more formal, make a bit of a statement um, with the, the main walkway. And Clydegate, we were very keen that we did something that was very distinctive and very bold because uh, this was going to have to stand alone um, until future development was realised. So it was much more about creating something quite significant. So we took some reference from a kind of former uses. So there was obviously the chemical works that led to all the nasty chromium. But um, a, like a lot of the surrounding areas of Glasgow in the kind of 18th century that was used uh, for uh, bleach fields and the bleaching of linen. And we quite liked that reference and the kind of metaphor and the symbolism that you could lay something onto the land that would be symbolic of cleansing and whitening. Um, and we felt that was kind of symbolic of the, uh, of the kind of remediation process of the, that was ongoing. Um, and we quite like these images that, you know, this, you can make quite a big visual impact with quite simple um, application of simple materials. Uh, and again, we kind of thought, because we want to do quite something big impact, but relatively cost effectively, we took that kind of reference. And someone said, well, maybe we could bleach something in strips. And we kind of thought what that might be. And someone said, well, shells, bleach. And we thought about West States projects of 20 years ago. And we thought, that sounds like a crazy idea. And Clydegate will never go for it. Um, but they kind of did. Uh, so a kind of first master plan, um, fairly informal landscape treatment on the on the river and quite a formal treatment um, which incorporated lots of uh, striking strips of cockle shells and the key thing about this was we were asked to be um, flexible with our design so that because there was no built development to respond to we had to design <laughs> it so that the a large part of this landscape strip was to be sacrificial so as and when d a built development comes on uh, stream, a lot of this would be sacrificed and a permanent landscape treatment or permanent public realm would be realised. So a lot this was envisaged to be strips of cockle shells and effectively wildflower meadows that could be sacrificed uh, without too much um, concerns about costs. So that was adopted through various iterations of the master plan. Um, and the final iteration of the master plan uh, is effectively what was built. So again, very formal main walkway. Uh, gateway spaces at each end and a more kind of informal treatment along the riverside which incorporated significant suds and various uh, riverside terraces um, and a small car park for marketing purposes. Um, lots of exploration through sections and we actually did a hell of a lot of work in optioneering what the materials should be and the uh, combination of materials. Um, I mean it was a very simple palette and I kind of acknowledge Aiden from Hardscape, a lot of Hardscape projects here, uh, Hardscape products here, I should say. Um, and we wanted to not only do the, the striped bleach fields pattern in the cockle shells as the big kind of spatial feature, but we also wanted to do something that was a bit more human scale in terms of um, a kind of subtle detail. It's not that subtle, but um, a detail feature that would be much more human in scale that you could kind of see as you're uh, moving along this space. We had a SketchUp model, it was a very much a working model, but it was very useful in terms of um, not only visualising for ourselves, but working with the client in terms of what these spaces would be and what the walkway would be, and uh, the uh, development of some of these gateway spaces. And again, um, this use, we ended up using Core 10 artwork panels to kind of frame the gateway spaces, just to really define those gateway spaces because there was nothing outside the spaces to really form those spaces. So these were designed to be demountable so they could be uh, taken down and re-erected in a new configuration elsewhere on site if if need be. And again we did a lot of work with what the artist uh, artwork panels would be. So this is a reference to the chemical and the, the use of uh, water again in the bleaching process and the you know, former chemical uh, um, chemical works on the site. This was the site before this is the site during constructions, and I quite like this image because it demonstrates uh, demolition, 
ground remediation, which is the darker brown and earthwork formation of Riverside, and then you've got the public realm um, under construction. Um, this must have been about spring 2014, the walkway, which was uh, phase one of phase one. Um, the client was desperately keen to have that open for the Commonwealth Games opening. So that was open for Commonwealth Games and then the Riverside um, and the rest <laughs> of the remediation followed on afterwards. And this is effectively what the site must look like today. Um, so again, um, main walkway, very formal, um, very striking, and the more kind of informal Riverside treatment along the Clyde. Drone images always look great, um, especially when you've got a very uh, regimented layout. Um, and then just various images of what the final scheme looks like. So um, the gateway space with the core 10 panels uh, framing the entrance to the walkway. Um, our nice stripy paving. Looking down towards the new smart bridge, which links you over to Dalmarnock and up to Dalmarnock Cross. Um, we altered the specification for the riverside. Um, this looks a bit immature. This is probably a couple of years old now when it was first planted, but I, th I think it's uh, matured a little bit. Um, and just to highlight that there is this slightly strange juxtaposition between the kind of green framework and effectively development plots. And it kind of, it's kind of interesting because actually when you go down to site, you don't necessarily see the development plots. And that's a bit of a desert, to be perfectly honest. And the, the green framework really does make quite a difference. And you can just make out that's the main walkway in the distance. Some images of some of the details. So again, it's a simple material palette, but we worked quite hard to make the details work. So uh, we were slightly anal. So these were 600 wide, so we expect a, a 300 wide to fit around the lighting uh, base unit. Um, cockle shells next to the stripy paving. That's one of my favourites. Um, and you know, slightly unexpected, but some of the uh, light effects via silhouette and especially winter sun coming through the core 10 panels is uh, really quite effective. And the amazing thing is that uh, people are using it and we kind of sometimes laugh because there's no development there. We're not quite sure where these people are going or where they're coming from, but it seems to be quite popular with cyclists and walkers and joggers and uh, yeah, it's really good to see people actually using it. Um, lessons learned, this is just a bit of fun. Um, be careful with hydro seeding. Uh, it's best to keep that for motorways and road jobs. Uh, beware of gorilla gardeners. <laughs> They're kind of out there. Um, they took offence to our monoculture approach to planting. And cockle shells, five tonnes of cockle shells smell really bad <laughs> when they come out of the sea and attract lots of wildlife. Um, but they're actually really easy to to spread. Um, just very quickly on phase two. Uh, this is phase one. Phase two is about three times large. It's m the more industrial side of the development. We've literally just started um, what they call the spine road route through the industrial states of so phase one. Um, and then just looking to develop the kind of uh, the, the main landscape framework for phase two. And that is my last slide. Thank you very much. <laughs>